Hello there, it's Charlotte here and welcome to a new acrylic painting course. Thank you so much for joining me or just checking out what I'm all about. Now, as I start a new canvas, I always like to give the same kind of introduction. So if you're a returning viewer, thank you very much. It's always quite good to be reminded about the reason or well, the reason why I'm doing these videos. So just bear with me while I give this introduction. But the, the main reason behind these long form courses, and when I say long form, I mean there's nothing sped up. This is an artist producing a painting in real time and talking through every decision. I've always felt that was so important, like lifting up the curtain to show you the full process of painting from at least one artist's perspective. And I would have found that enormously helpful when I was starting out because there wasn't anything available. Nobody really shared the secrets or their process to the degree that I needed somebody to do. And through all my teaching and my own painting practice, I've come to understand how important it is to share the, the tips and techniques, but also how to problem solve and what to do when you do have one of those bad painting days and things don't go your way or you get really frustrated and you want to put a knife through the canvas and you want to throw it away. How do you actually get around that so that the painting can become a really helpful sort of moral tale for how we deal with things in life as well and just working through the, the problems on the canvas. So you will see this the entire painting process in lots of different chapters and I will demonstrate all of my colour mixing and uh, and you'll see how I will approach making something up and, and using not only sort of technical knowledge, but an aesthetic understanding and, and my artistic eye to work round any issues that might crop up to get to a painting that I feel really happy with. So as it's in real time, there will be some parts that you might not feel relevant to you it's entirely up to you to fast forward through the videos that you don't want to um, see. But you might also find that it's helpful having me talking in the background while you're painting along with me. So I'll be able to demonstrate all of the different palette knife techniques that I'm using, how I mix the colours and giving you a commentary the whole way through why I'm doing certain things, which is really, really helpful. Now, bear in mind, I've been painting for quite a long time and the, for the first five or six years, I only ever worked from photographs. So I have a lot of experience of, of working from photos and learning how to create something which looks realistic based on the light and the shade, which is essentially everything you need to think about in, in painting. The balance of light and shade, colour and then a little bit of technique thrown in little bit of risk taking and a lot of fun. <laughs> Let's try and have some fun. But don't feel that you have to suddenly start with a blank canvas and just paint something. I mean, that's probably why you're here, to learn how to have more confidence, to develop a better understanding of uh, your art materials, and also to produce the painting that you've seen as the finished work in this course. And this is the exciting part for me, which is always a little bit surreal because you know what the finished painting looks like and I have no idea what it's going to look like. I've, I've got some idea in my head. I tend to be a little bit led by my earrings as to what colours I'm going to paint with. But I, I know that I want to do a waterfall and, and rocks and I haven't done those in a, in a course for a little while. I'm feeling inspired to do that, but I haven't got any uh, reference material. I've just, I've got the knowledge of seeing lots of waterfalls and rocks and having painted them before. So I'll be able to talk you through how I will create that entire work from my imagination. But remember, this is also based in a lot of practice and a lot of, of technical understanding and confidence with the materials and with the way I use the tools. And that's 80% of it. It's the confidence to take the risks and not be afraid of making mistakes. And you'll see through this whole process that I will be making mistakes and I will show you how to, I will correct those and how I work around that whole process. 
of exploration, of having a challenging painting day, of uh, having a really good day, and the resolution of, of the work through all of those different moods and um, environmental elements. <laughs> so here we go. Now you will have seen the, the painting list in the introductory writing. It's also, uh, I've got photographs of all the paints with part two, there's a PDF. But essentially, we're just working with a very, very simple palette of primary colours. I'm only going to use one of each. We've got Orthalo Blue, Green Shade, we've got a Cadmium Red, Medium, that's a Cad, a cad Yellow Light. And um, as you can see, my white's already dripping down. But I use a very cheap white, but the, the pigments, the um, primary colours are really good quality. If you're watching your budget a little bit, um, definitely you can buy a cheaper white. The blue is really important when you're starting out. Uh, don't get a blue which has got a white mixed in. And you can tell on the shelf when you look at the, the colors. If it's a slightly light blue, it's got a white mixed in. And if you use that as your primary color, it will have a huge impact on the, the colours that you can mix. So try and think about blue as being quite an important one to invest in if you're really watching your budget. But if you're if you're struggling a little bit with, with the, the sense of expense, just use cheaper paints because this will, the technical side and the confidence building will help enormously. And that's the most important aspect and you can invest in, in different paints further down the line. So what I'm going to show you first is how I will start this whole painting process. I'm not going to draw anything out with a pencil, but feel free to actually sketch out the, the shapes that I'm creating. If that gives you a little bit more confidence and if you feel more comfortable applying the paint when you've got some guidelines, it doesn't matter at all. In an ideal world, you'll start to feel more and more comfortable putting the paint directly on the canvas, just with a brush, knowing full well, and I'll repeat this so many times, we can paint over anything we don't like. It's the wonder of acrylic. It dries really quickly. We can keep painting layers. We will be building up a lot of layers with palette knife. So anything that you're not happy with can just be painted over. It's that simple. There aren't really any errors from that perspective. It's just building up layers, building up depth. So to start with, I'm going to take a good dollop of white. This is my two inch, five centimeter flat brush. I'm starting off with my cake mixing technique, which you may have seen in one of the free videos on YouTube. This is how to blend a, a smooth sky. So essentially having the bristles at 90 degrees to the canvas, which cuts through the whole lump of paint. So I do circles, and then sweep back and forth. I've also taped the sides of the canvas with a, a good masking tape, so I don't have to worry about what's happening on the edge. I can just focus on the front of the canvas, which is really important with palette knife, because taking the thickness of palette knife around the side is very impractical. Very possibly, you've got your canvas flat on a table in front of you, so any paint on the sides, especially if it's thick, will start dripping down. And this just having tape around the edge just allows me to forget about the sides, just focus on the top. So I've done about a third in a thin-ish layer of, of white. There's not very much uh, thickness and no ripples left, but I can still feel that's a nice moisturized layer. And always start with the object which is furthest away from you so in this case it's going to be the sky and i would always bring the sky lower than i want it to be in the finished work because i can then build the foreground over the top of the sky so i'm going to start with my phthalo blue i'm just taking a small amount on the the tips of the bristles and i'm going to do a few little lines all the way across and then cake mix through so this cuts through the blue blobs gets rid of any thickness there and then I can go back and forth 
if your paint starts dragging add extra weight on don't add water the water will create a hole in the paint it will actually remove it and one of the wonderful things about acrylic is is the thickness and the the wonderful opaque effect you can get with these these really rich colors so adding water not only will you have the the paint dripping down you'll probably also just remove quite a lot of it so i mean that's an incredibly simple way to create a quite a smooth soft blend just to add a bit of interest i'm going to put the tiniest bit of red just a small amount so up in one color to give a, a little bit of a grayish purpley tone now depending on your particular blue and your red you may have a slightly different color to me you will get different versions of this tone but you see how mixing cake mixing the red into the blue because i'm just using small quantities of color we can get really simple subtle results and in this sky blend you can basically make this as strong as vibrant as you want it to be i've created a relatively soft look you might find that you put on a lot more blue in the first instance and it's a really vibrant tone and that's fine you've got to remember this is your painting and anything that you do is going to be it's going to be different to mine anyway with the way that you're applying the paint and you've got to allow yourself that artistic leeway as well perhaps you don't want to add any gray in or you just you want to do your sky pink that's completely fine it's there comes a point where you take the technical advice and the and then take that and turn it into the, the kind of painting that you want to you want to make I'm going to add a little bit more white. So just to show you, if you feel that that perhaps you've added too much colour in there, if I wanted to lighten it again, any paint that I would add into a soft blend, the first thing I want to do is cake mix through to get rid of any thick lumps. And then I can go back and forth. So just adding are there any streaks that appear. I know that I'm going to be building the foreground in above this bottom line of sky, so I'm not worried about the bottom edge. So as you can see, I'm, I'm just taking the brush on a soft angle, so it's not too horizontal, but it doesn't matter what uh, how you apply the, the paint. Just make sure that your brush comes all the way off the edge. If I was trying to even up the, the line, get rid of any uh streaks by doing this can you see how we start to get brush marks in the in the paint and the best thing to do is long sweeping lines even if you have to go back and forth back and forth also the slower marks actually keep the paint wet for longer as soon as you start speeding up your your brush marks you create a lot of friction and heat and that dries the paint out much more quickly so it feels counterintuitive to go very slowly, but it's it's the best way to keep that, that paint moving and, and the soft blend. So just stepping back, yeah, there's just a little bit of a, a fade up through there. I'm not at all worried that it's slightly streaky because there's gonna be so much interest in the foreground that we might only see a tiny bit of that sky anyway. And if you find that when this is dried, it's a much thinner layer than you're hoping for and there are lines and streaks through it you can just do it again it's it's always worth building up a second layer i'll show you how to create a little bit of dry brushing effect over the top just to fill in a few small holes when that's dried but for now i'm very happy with that soft subtle sky so now thinking about the rocks i'm going to keep using the same brush everything this first layer is going to be done with this big brush I'm mixing a bit of the red into some blue. I'm going to take just a tiny bit of white so I can see the tone more clearly. So I'm making a really deep grey. And now what I want to do is actually plan out with just by drawing with the brush, I can use it as a line where I want some of the shapes to be. So this is really very much a, the simplicity of planning 
So let's say that the, the waterfall might come down here. And I then have rocks coming up there, nice and high. So I'm just going to start building in a block of tone. I'm adding a little bit more red into that blue because, of course, I've got the blue of the sky behind. So I just want to block in a solid shape. And on this side, maybe the rocks are a little bit more varied. I wanted to go up quite high, even though I quite like some of that sky shape there. Now I'm going to just fill this in. And of course, I can alter this at any stage when it's dry. This is just to get the first layers down, plan the painting, be able to see how those shapes are going to form. So I want the, the pool that the waterfall comes into, perhaps to be that sort of oval shape. And I definitely want a, a little overspill to happen here. I might have that going right off the canvas. We'll see how that, oh, maybe it feels better if it's going to be contained. And then more red, a little bit of blue, just a touch of white. Now filling in some of this, again, big broad strokes, just creating an understanding for my eye of the placement of everything within this painting at this early stage. Again, rocks, 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 and then down here. Now, I'm definitely gonna have rocks coming over the top of the water, but for now, because I'll be doing the water first, I don't want to have too much of a, of a high edge of rock to negotiate. So let's just block this in, a little bit more red in there, just mixing up the colours quite quickly. Red, blue and white equals grey in different forms. So I've got a really dark, sort of purpley grey tone here. All right. Now I can add, because I've got a little bit of this paint left. Add a few more shapes. Again, just really early planning stages, nice big abstract forms. Now into this whole area here, I'm going to also build in some water tone, blue and white, the simplicity of that, just sideways. The point of this first layer is to help plan where everything's going to go and to fill in all of the white canvas. So you've got a background colour for all of the palette knife work and brushwork that's going to be done over the top. Getting rid of that white canvas is really helpful for your eye to be able to start seeing how everything comes together, but it also forms a really important sort of first layer. There we go. So you see how I've just used the edge of the flat brush just to create that curve. So obviously <laughs> the water's coming from that side and it will go off down there. And just building in very, very, very simple shapes. Since I've got some yellow on there, I might as well take a bit of yellow, mix it in to this blue. So maybe we're starting to get a little bit of a greenish tone in the background. And there we have it. So at the moment, we have incredibly regular sort of symmetrical shapes and they will surely alter as I'm doing all of the other layers. It feels like it might be almost too neat and too regular and symmetrical. And that is just fine because I can edit and alter at any stage. I'll probably bring the rocks a little bit more tightly in. In fact, I'm going to do that right now since I'm talking about it and I've got the paint left. Blue, red, touch of white. Let's bring some rocks further around this side just to cut off that end. But equally, as I'm going, I can 
add in additional water around there. It's always a work in progress. And that's what's wonderful about doing lots of different layers and just feeling like you've got the confidence to make changes as we go. Just adding in a little bit of the dark paint along here just to help me understand where there's going to be some shadow and just to use up some of that colour. So you see how simple it is to create very quickly a whole picture plan, knowing full well it's going to evolve, it's going to change, and that's really exciting. So this is a great start to what is obviously going to be <laughs> a lovely waterfall picture with some great sense of rocky background. And I'm certain that I will add in some uh, foliage. I mean, you know what I've done with the painting, don't you? <laughs> I'm sure that there'll be some green and some bushes added in over the top. But I think I'll just leave it at that first layer. So have fun with creating that uh, blank kind of background for yourself. And we're going to work from there in the next video. All right, I'll see you soon. Bye.